Hey there, so I wanted to talk a little bit today on what I am calling the death of monoculture. Essentially, there's this kind of feeling that I've had for a few years now where I just feel like I'm detached from a larger culture. In the past, there has always been the mainstream, right? And it's like, that's where the term alternative comes from, is it's like alternative rock or alternative art, alternative music. The reason it's alternative is because it has a mainstream to kind of be an alternate for. If there are no prevailing trends, then something cannot be alternative by definition. But I kind of feel like the sense of prevailing trends has disappeared to a certain extent. Don't get me wrong, there are big movies, there are big rappers or musicians or writers even, there are big video games, there are things that are big, things that are popular and are played and enjoyed or listened to or loved by many people. But I feel so detached from anything that is popular or mainstream and I think that there are two things happening. Number one, I think that the mainstream culture has kind of died to a certain extent just because of the internet. And number two, even though the mainstream culture has died, I think it still exists, but I think it can be entirely avoided due to the internet. So we are going to be talking about how the internet fragmented and broke up the larger culture. There are different movies or shows or games even that are different cultural touchstones for certain points in time. Whenever you think of the 90s, you think of Nirvana. So there are stories I've heard about the 90s about how if you went into any store, you would hear Smells Like Teen Spirit playing. Or if I wear anything black, then people are like, oh, My Chemical Romance. There are certain things that people can point to and then they can be like, oh yeah, this reminds me of this big thing. You wearing black and formerly having long hair makes you Gerard Way. Or if I was a dude with long blonde hair and I wore flannel, it would be like, oh, hey, Kurt Cobain. Nowadays, I just feel so disconnected from the mainstream. And that's not a problem. That's not something that I'm ashamed of or feel bad about. And to a certain extent, I kind of feel like that's the case with everyone. The internet has made it easier than ever to be disconnected from the mainstream just because of the fact that it has opened up everything that ever was to us. And so what that means is it's like, hey, if your favorite genre of music is like 1700s Russian folk music, you can find that crap on Spotify. Or it's like, hey, do you want to read 2000 year old Persian texts? Sure, go ahead. If you want to listen to only metal that was made in the 80s, you can do that. You can do that. You're not limited by a record store or anything like that. You just have access to every album ever recorded at any given period, including metal albums in the 80s. And so you can do that. If you wanted to watch only movies that started with the letter A, for the rest of your life, that's completely a viable option. Like, I don't know why you would freaking do that because that's weird, but like, you can do it, dude. Like, there are enough movies out there that start with the letter A that you can, you can do it, yeah. So I think we're seeing two things happen. I think that we're seeing the larger culture kind of split apart and fragment, and I think it has been fragmented for a long time just because of the internet. Because the internet allows you influences from completely disparate places. The internet has given us access to media and to thoughts and, you know, nonfiction documents from any time period, basically. So I think that as the culture has kind of broken up and as things have fallen apart, I think that we've seen an increase in just kind of weird random bullcrap being added to video games. So there's Nicolas Cage in Dead by Daylight, and it's like, why is there an actor in Dead by Daylight? And it's like, I don't know but people pay 10 bucks for him, and so he's in there. Even the basic premise of the game is something that couldn't have existed, you know, 20 or 30 years ago, where it's like, hey, we're going to have a bunch of killers from various horror movies, just from different franchises, and then also there's gonna be original characters, original killers, and it's just this really unique thing that could only exist in an age where the internet exists. Because I think we just kind of take it for granted, I think that we take everything kind of being blurred and mixed together for granted. But like, it's easy to forget that only like 15 years ago, superhero movies did not go together. <laughs> like every superhero stayed in their own universe. And in the age of Marvel, it's like, oh yeah, of course, you know, this character who appeared seven movies ago is getting their own solo movie for no reason. It's like, yeah, whatever. Of course, Big Wheel is getting a movie. It's like, of course, The Wall is getting a movie. Of course, The Hypno Hustler is getting a movie. That one's real. Of course, Madam Web got a freaking movie. I don't know what idiot thought it was a good idea to make a Madam Web movie, but like, you're stupid. I don't know what to say. Who looks at the old lady in Spider-Man comics and goes, oh yeah, let's make a solo movie about her. <laughs> but things are just being kind of thrown together. And there's something I think about often that Mark Fisher said. He argued that a dying culture essentially seeks to remind itself of the good old days 
as a means to kind of soothe itself, as a means to distract itself from its death. So I remember a very specific video where he's giving a lecture and he cites the Arctic Monkeys and Amy Winehouse as being examples of the culture decaying, basically. Because again, this was the mid-2000s, both of these groups were big. According to him, both Amy Winehouse and I suppose Alex Turner both sought to kind of replicate older styles, and therefore, in his eyes, that meant that the culture was dying. And if the culture is dying, then that is the decay of a civilization, essentially. And this is an idea that has kind of stuck with me, and I've thought about it for a number of years now. And I'm not saying that I think he's wrong about that. I'm not saying that he's wrong that when a civilization is dying, that it seeks to remind itself of the good old days. I'm not saying he's wrong about that, but I do think that something else is happening. I do think that something else has happened. I think that rather than the culture dying, I think that it has kind of mutated. So I think the monoculture has died. In a lot of ways, it feels like there are people who are big, it feels like there are groups who are big, but they're just not, um, I don't feel like I know anything about them and I don't feel like I have to know anything about them. And maybe this has always been the case. Maybe it's always just been normal, you know, for people to just not really care about the major culture. But I think that the internet affording us such easy access to literally anything that has ever existed has made it to where our attentions are kind of drawn away from the present and are able to be pulled more easily back into the past. I wear a lot of band shirts. Um, this is not a band shirt, this is a Batman shirt, but I wear a lot of band shirts. And I wear a lot of 80s band shirts. There are a lot of good bands from the 80s. You know, I like Nine Inch Nails or Metallica or Skinny Puppy or The Smiths or The Cure or New Order or Joy Division. Depeche Mode, Megadeth, Susie and the Banshees, whatever. There were a bunch of great 80s bands. And so I had a professor one time ask me and she was like, Noah, do you like love the 80s? And I was like, no, I don't love the 80s. I don't have any kind of special affectation towards that decade. I wasn't alive then. I don't really feel anything towards it. But rather, I like a lot of stuff that came from the 80s, and it's not because it came from the 80s, it's because it's good. It's like, why do I own a copy of Master of Puppets on vinyl? Because it's a great freaking record. It's not because it's from the 80s. If Master of Puppets came out today, it would still be a great record. If Disintegration by The Cure came out today instead of in 1989, it would be a great record. If Pretty Hate Machine came out today instead of 1989, it would still be a great record. Things aren't good because of the time period in which they were produced. Things are just good. And so I think that whenever I listen to Mark Fisher say that the culture is dying because of the fact that the Arctic Monkeys and Amy Winehouse are kind of uh, referencing older styles or something like that, then I can't help but feel that like that just doesn't, it doesn't feel right to me because I feel like to a certain extent, every generation has looked to previous generations to do something new. Every generation has referred to what the generations prior to them did. I think there will always be things that are popular because new things are exciting. Like that's just a fact of life. But at the same time, I think that the internet giving us boundless access to things of the past has made it to where we're not so restrained by the modern era. I think that if you look at the past, there have been music scenes in certain cities. So for instance, grunge was a Seattle thing in the late 80s, early 90s, or thrash metal was like a Bay Area, California thing in the 80s. So I think you'll always have scenes to a certain extent, but I don't really feel that so strongly recently. Maybe this is simply a case of finding it difficult to see something when you're in it, but I don't really know of something like that, you know, that has sprung up over the past few years. I don't know of any like super cool underground rock music scenes that exist in the world right now. Or I won't say that I don't know of any great rock music scenes, but I will say that I haven't heard of any cities where it's like, these guys have a unique style that is completely their own. And I think that the internet has allowed everything to kind of meld together and come together in a way that is very messy um, and genre breaking. People are less afraid of experimenting outside of their wheelhouse, and I think it's awesome. People are just slamming genres together in any medium, but at the same time, everything feels so divided and broken up. It doesn't feel like anyone I know is really like listening to the same music. It feels like everyone is listening to their own stuff, or everyone is watching their own movies, or everyone is playing their own games, and I think it's more than just having different tastes. I think that really what it is, is that we have so many options available to us that it's like, of course, why would we ever stumble upon the same thing? If I have my interests and you have your interests, then sure, they're gonna overlap sometimes. But if I have an infinite amount of things that are gonna fulfill my interests and my specific weird, unique interests, and you have a specific amount of things that are gonna fulfill your weird, specific amount, 
unique interest, whatever. I'm sorry, it's late. If I have my crap and you have your crap, and we both have unlimited supplies of crap. <laughs> Let's screw it. This is not, I, should, I need to use a different word. If I have my stuff, you have your stuff, and we both have unlimited supplies of new stuff, then it's like, why would we ever like not entertain ourselves with our own stuff? And of course, people have always had their own preferences. This is nothing new. But I feel like there is only a limited amount of time that we have on Earth, and there is a limited amount of time that anyone can spend like consuming art. No matter how much you love music, you can't listen to all of it. Like that, that sounds obvious and it is, but it's like you can't listen to all the music in the world. You can't even listen to all the music in one specific style in the world, but there's enough of it where you can like try to listen to it. So it's really easy to get sucked into something and it's really easy to just kind of stay in your own bubble and to be immersed in it and to be completely away and separated from the rest of culture. And so in short, I think that's what everyone has done to a certain extent. I think there are different groups. I think there are different cliques, even within the context of the internet, just different people run in different circles. Everyone has their own favorite social media platform and everyone uses it in a different way. We have an unlimited amount of options. And so because of that, the culture is fragmented and broken. And I don't think that's a bad thing necessarily. It just means that people are getting more of what they want, but that in itself is kind of, um, should people always get what they ask for? And it's like, Sure, but at the same time, if you just ask for the same thing repeatedly, then you might be missing out on something you need. You might be missing out on finding something that you don't enjoy because of the fact that it is not the only thing available to you. I have this really weird idea that I think that certain things can kind of fill the same function as other things. So in literature, there exists an idea of a Western canon. The Western canon is not some set list of books. Rather, it's just something that's kind of amorphous and blobby. It's like who belongs in the Western canon? It's like Shakespeare, Dante, Chaucer, I don't know, Mark Twain probably, Dickens, Fitzgerald, I don't know who else. I would throw McCarthy in there, but I just love Blood Meridian, so, you know, I'm biased. But whenever I was studying English, I kind of realized that I would never be able to read all of the classics. I would never be able to read all of the great works. But I don't think you have to. I don't think you have to read all of the great works, or I don't think you have to listen to all the great albums in order to get enough of a handle on everything. In all things, there is a limited amount that can be done. I think you can look at it like this. In Dark Souls, you can be different classes, right? You can be a knight, you can be a sorcerer, you can be a pyromancer, you can be a mage, you can be a wanderer or the naked guy or whatever. You can be just whatever in Dark Souls. And they start with different weapons. So you can have like an ax or a club or a fireball or a sword or a spear or a dagger or whatever. All these weapons are different and they work in different ways but they still allow you to kill the asylum demon and escape the asylum. In the same way, I think that different books offer different things. I think they offer different ideas, but I still think that reading different books can get you the same skills. But I think that the internet is messy. I think the internet has complicated things. And I don't think that's a bad thing necessarily, because I think that even though people are consuming different media, I don't think that means that we're not learning the same things. I think art is there to help us connect with other people, and I think it's there to help us connect and to better understand ourselves. I think that whether or not the culture is actually fragmented, or whether or not I'm just some biased Zoomer who has only heard stories about the good old days of the 90s, I think that either way, I think that things will be okay. I'm not some kind of doomsayer. I'm not saying that this is a bad thing that I feel that the internet has kind of fragmented the culture. And in fact, I quite like it. And the internet has made it to where it's like weird stuff, stuff that used to be weird is like mainstream. So it's like anime is a great example of this. And it's like, oh yeah, it's just completely normal to watch anime. Like just, just flat out, like everyone watches anime. And it used to be like a weird kid thing. It used to be like, oh yeah, you know, I knew kids who would watch Yu-Gi-Oh. And then it's like, you were really weird if you watched like Naruto or something like that if you played Yu-Gi-Oh in the hallway or something, but now it's like, no one cares. No one cares, like just everyone does their own thing. Everyone watches weird videos like this. Everyone does whatever the frick they want. And um, I love it, I love it. I'm really happy that everyone does what they want. And I feel like fewer and fewer people are feeling constrained by what they feel is popular or mainstream purely because that doesn't exist anymore. Or it still exists, there are still blockbuster movies, there are still big temple movies, and there are still big albums. Those things still exist, but they're not the only things that exist. I truly believe that you can find great art in any time period and in any location around the globe. But really, um, these are some thoughts I've had. So thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Please feel free to like leave your own thoughts because my opinion on this is like not fully formed, I feel. And I don't even know how to like fully form it because I feel like it's impossible to get a full grasp and understanding of a culture 
because that's like big like that's like a big idea but anyways just from within my little small bubble this is how i've seen it so anyways um thank you for watching it's very late i'm gonna go to bed so night see ya